On the last day of the first championship in Houston, in April of 2023, FIRST released the trailer for the upcoming 2023-2024 season of FIRST. The overall theme of the season is called FIRST IN SHOW. The FIRST LEGO League season in particular is titled Masterpiece. Its participants will imagine and innovate new ways to create and communicate art and experiences across the globe through STEM. Included in these teasers for Masterpiece is a preview of the new first LEGO League Challenge field for next season. Here's the video for those who have not seen it yet. This video gave us a quick look at the missions and field for the next season. The field looks like a colorful masterpiece itself. One of the immediate things we, as well as many others, noticed is that the field has two launch areas again, with home bases on either side of the table just like it did last season. This allows the teams to launch their robots closer to the missions they are trying to complete, making all missions on the entire field more accessible. And it will again allow more drivers to actively participate in a match. In general, there also seems to be more space between the different fixed mission models this year. This will be helpful for teams that build their robots from the Spike Prime build instructions, for example, as they will have more space to maneuver around the field. As we have seen in previous years, this season seems to use one color to suggest the part of the mission model that can be interacted with to activate each model. In City Shaper, the so-called action color was blue. In Replay, it was light green. In Cargo Connect, it was yellow. And last year, in Super Powered, it was red. And this coming year, based on the pictures we are seeing, the action color appears to be orange. With these basic reactions out of the way, let's break down the mission models on next season's field that we have already discovered from the video. We will be going clockwise from left red launch area around the outer edge of the field and then eventually circle to the inside mission models in order to keep things organized. Let's start off with the mission model on the left hand side with the green dragon. We call this the movie theater. On the mat by the model we see a sketch of a popcorn bucket and a drink, as well as the end of a movie reel. We think this model represents a movie screen and the mission is to make the dragon come out of the screen just like in a 3D movie. We also saw moviegoers wearing 3D glasses in the trailer. It looks like there are two orange levers towards the back of the model to push the dragon and its claws out of the movie screen. Activation might require either a pull from the front or a push sideways. The next mission model is what we are calling the Performing Arts Mission. On the map, there are two theater masks and a curtain illustrated by this mission. The model has what looks like a rotating platform with three stages showing different types of performances, a magic show, a ballet, and a play. For activation, we think the orange cross beam in the front of the model pivots down to lift up the wheels on either side to spin the three stages. It might be possible for a robot to just spin the stages directly though. 
We think that teams will be able to score different points depending on what stage will be in the front at the end of the match. The next mission model going clockwise on the field looks to us like an art gallery. The video does include a scene of four children looking at a sculpture in a gallery type setting. There is an orange angled beam in the front center and we think the robots will have to use it to move the platform up or down which will then lower or raise the three purple walls of art. West of the art gallery mission on the north side of the field is a mission model that we believe represents a statue that must be unveiled. There is an ancient statue depicted by this mission on the map. The model has what looks like the petals of a flower covering up the sculpture in the middle. We believe that the robot has to pull the orange lever on the front left side of the model to make the flower spin and open up, revealing the statue inside. In the northwest corner of the field is a mission model that we call the concert venue. There is a guitar, music notes, and a ticket stub illustrated on the field by the model. This model looks to us like it has three different parts that can probably be completed individually to score points, and possibly bonus points if all of them are activated. We believe that the orange activator in the front is a push bar, and it turns the light blue circle on the stage to turn the singer around. The orange angled beam on the left side of the stage needs to be flipped from right to left or vice versa to turn the speakers around so they face towards the infield. And the orange angled beam on the right side of the model appears to need to be flipped down to adjust the stage lighting. Continuing clockwise on the field to an area that looks like it's splattered in paint, we see what we think are two mission models. One looks like a printer and we think that it is a two-part mission model. There is an orange push bar in the front that we believe needs to be pushed in to print a sheet of Masterpiece logos. Then, the orange and white lid must be opened to reveal the printed logo sheet. Most likely, each activation will score points individually and bonus points if both are completed. The other model is what we call virtual reality. In the video, we see human players with VR headsets on. We believe that the model represents a person trying to chase a chicken. To activate the model, it looks like the weighted orange angled lever needs to be pulled towards the front of the model to move the VR player's arm up and turn the chicken, possibly multiple times to achieve a certain turn angle of the chicken. Along the south side of the table, by the movie clapboard illustration on the field, is what looks like another multi-part mission model that we call cinematography or filmmaking. The scene represented in the model is the filming of a sailboat sailing in the sea. The sailboat in the model appears to sit on a cart that is attached to a string with a ring at the end and the string is guided through a small block that ensures the sailboat cannot be pulled further. There are rail tracks along the south wall which a camera dolly can travel parallel to the side boat. We believe that the sailboat must be fully moved past the short black line on the mat to score points. Near the end of the rail tracks is an orange angled beam. We predict that one of the tasks is that it must be put in place as an end stop so that the camera dolly does not travel further than the sailboat. The camera dolly will sit on the gate structure near the blue right launch area at the start of the match. To release the camera dolly onto the track, we think the robot needs to activate the orange cross beam that pivots on the start gate structure. As we circle into the middle of the field, we see a mission model that looks like a mixing console. We also saw a mixing desk in the video. We believe the three mixing sliders need to be moved up in a certain order or to a certain position as determined by the connected levers or beams that are visible in the back of the model. The last big mission model is in the center of the mat and it is a tall tower with a spinning top. We think it is a lever meter. If you look closely, you can see a white marker and a scale with different colors on two sides of the tower. We believe that the horizontal axles with the orange connectors need to be lifted up straight. As the axles are lifted, the gray spiral spins the top of the tower and the white pointer on the side of the tower moves up the scale into yellow, blue, or green areas, probably scoring more points the higher the marker is moved. Now that we've looked at fixed mission models, let's move on to extra, smaller models that we've discovered in the video. During the video, we saw five minifigs on white plates with orange rings on the table. First, a minifigure with red hair holding a pen and notebook standing by the three-stage theater. Second, a minifigure with a skater helmet on a skateboard standing by the VR and printer missions. Third, a minifigure with gray hair holding a phone or tablet standing by the mixing table. 
Fourth, a minifigure with brown hair, maybe wearing light blue VR goggles, holding a tablet, standing on the sketch of a director's chair near the filmmaking mission model, and the blue launch area. And fifth, just barely, you can see another minifigure with black hair, yellow shirt, and black pants, maybe holding a conductor's baton in the right hand blue launch area. All of these minifigs likely need to be collected and moved to a target area on the map. We think that the illustrations of popcorn bucket, theater masks, skateboard, pavilion, music notes, ticket stub, and maybe even the guitar, clapboard and film camera are target areas this year. So the skateboarding minifig most likely needs to be moved to the skateboard on the map, for example. It is interesting to note that the flexible gray loops that have usually been seen on mission models that need to be picked up in previous years seem to have been replaced by these orange rings. These appear to be more rigid, which should make it easier to pick these items up, as the rings will always be in the same place and not bend as easily as they did sometimes with the gray loops. In the video, we also see seven orange minifigures in the left red home area. A large group of them was shown in front of the concert venue model in the intro. These plain orange minifigs could either be spectators that need to be transported to target areas by certain mission models like the performing arts theater or concert venue. Or, since we have not seen any precision tokens, maybe the red coins from last year have been replaced by these orange minifigures as precision tokens for this year. During the video, we also saw a two-piece mission model shown in the right blue home area as well as the blue launch area. We are unsure of what it represents. Maybe it's an art sculpture? It looks like it needs to be put together. Maybe the two pieces start out in the two different home areas and one part needs to be brought to the other. Or we are thinking that they might have to be positioned together somewhere on the map, like on the sketch of the pavilion to the right of the art gallery. Another thought is that this contraption represents this year's innovation project model, and each team can use their creativity to build anything they want. The question is if there will be another bag with pieces for an innovation project model. No innovation project pieces were shown in the video. If you think you know what it is, tell us in the comments, we would like to hear from you. Another thing we noticed is that next season doesn't have any obvious cooperation mission model. In previous years, there has always been one mission that connected both competing tables, like the smart grid mission in last year's super powered season, the helicopter mission from Cargo Connect, or the bridge in City Shaper. We can't believe that there wouldn't be a cooperation mission this year. Could the Performing Arts mission act as the cooperation mission? Do two teams on two tables have to turn the stage to the same color to earn the bonus points? We saw something similar to this in 2016 Animal Allies season, in which M03 Animal Conservation mission, both teams earn points if they place the same animal in the conservation area during a match. If you think there will be a cooperation mission this year, we would love to hear your prediction. Either way, this concludes our breakdown of Masterpiece, the 2023 first LEGO League Challenge game reveal. What do you think of this season's theme and the missions that were shown? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. We'll see you again in August for the season kickoff, and best of luck to all teams participating this upcoming season.